Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. I'm so happy, no sorrow. together camping. So we have a campfire. We have a buffalo. 
We have a bear, but he's behaving himself. So, and we don't have any running water, so it must be camping. Uh, the, we had a, a break in a water main this morning, so there isn't any water. And emergencies, bathroom stops need to be at the gas station. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so we're in for adventure today. I'm also rearranging the service a little bit because um, I really want us to have some time specifically to address some of the really difficult stuff that's been happening in our... In our um, in our country this week. So we're going to rearrange the order just a little bit. And I was a little sad because when we sang one of the camp songs this morning, we did not sing, give me umption in my gumption, let me function, function, function. You remember that one? Or give me gas in my Ford, keep me trucking for the Lord. There's a million of those, right? I, um, before I decided to do this particular theme of doing camp songs and stuff this month, I put out a little note on Facebook of what people's favorite camp songs are. And I realized there's really a generational gap with some of our songs because a lot of the younger people didn't have any clue about the songs that some of us were talking about. So we're gonna do ex a little exploring of that. And if you have a favorite camp song, be sure and let me know. Uh, this week, um, people from all over the West are going to be gathering in F Phoenix, Arizona for the Western Jurisdiction Conference of the United Methodist Church. And um, I'm, I am going to be there along with a number of our folks from Yellowstone Conference. And I have a number of hats that I'm wearing. I'm not a delegate. I, I think I'm actually, I'm not sure what I am, a gopher perhaps. But anyway, one of the tasks that I was asked to do a couple weeks ago was to come up with stoles for all of the delegates. So I, have, I and my, some of my minions have been busy this week making stoles uh, for the folks that are gathering from all over. Um, the theme this time is crossing thresholds. And we'll have, um, be talking about climbing mountains and going through valleys and, and a, a little mountain climbing in there as well. So we have created these um, handprints from some of our kids and have stenciled them on, and these will be going to all those delegates. Um, we'll also be doing some prayer flags, and if any of you would like to create a prayer flags, I have pens and equipment on uh, the communion table today if you'd like to help us to do that uh, for our altar at conference. It's always a, a, an amazing and wondrous time. We will be electing a bishop this time around, so that's also a very... Um, I've never gotten to witness one of those, so that should be really an interesting thing to do. I'll also be doing things like leading worship and making sure people are in the right place at the right time. Um, so as this is happening this week, I would appreciate it if we could just spend a moment of a blessing upon those who are going to be delegates this week. And I'm wondering, let's see, who can I ask? Uh, John, would you come up and bless the delegates for us and bless these these signs that we will be with them. So when you think of any of the delegates this week, you know that they will be surrounded not only with um, love from our conference, but also from our children and our congregation. Let us pray. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gracious God, there are people that are coming together, delegates and friends and family coming together this week to do the important job of electing a, lay, a leader for our denomination. Give them wisdom and insight. It'll open our arms to receive and may we pledge our support to those elected in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, John. Okay. Beloved, would you stand as you're able for our call to worship? I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. 
The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Beloved of God, may the peace of Christ be with you. And before we greet one another, I just want to say a special greeting to someone who has a new last name today, Kathy Upson Sundquist, who married Gary uh, a couple days ago. So congratulations, Kathy. Let us greet one another in Christ's peace. might have remembered. Yeah, a little bit. That's the trouble uh, with camp songs is they evolve, you know, and you never know what verses you know. Please be seated. We just sing our own. Yeah, yeah, that works all right. Alrighty, um, I've, as I said, I've rearranged things a little bit, so now our campfire story is going to be uh, now with Alan Adams, who is our special ranger of the day here. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for inviting me. I, I had a good time just remembering some stories I might tell. And uh, the one that I kept remembering with a, a lot of joy was the, the memories we have of the MYF Friendship Circle. That's what we called it in those days. You remember, Mary, that's what you called it too, I think. Uh, it was a circle that uh, the youth joined and after their activities and after their, their scripture readings and after their recreation, after their singing, and they were all in a circle. And they, they, uh, the, the president of the MYF was in charge. Youth were in charge of it. And so uh, he or she would say join hands now and we would we join hands with the person skip the person next to you and reach on to oh, the next sure. one yes they it's still do that alan i just want you to know well, yeah. oh, that. Good. They do. Well, that's a weaving and it was felt so good and uh people were the the president would ask somebody to start the speaking they each person was granted the privilege of saying something and so Bob was asked, and so Bob started, and then he, he said something like, I've had a lot of fun tonight, thank you, God. And another, he, another Mary would say, oh, this was such a, a good time, thank you all for being here, all of you. 
And then another would say, uh, I'm, I need help. My, I have some relatives that are really sick, so please help me, God, and please, all of you help me. And we'd say yes, and, and then they'd go on all around the circle. And someone didn't want to speak, well, they would, they would uh, bump shoulder of the next one, and they would, they would skip that person. But then when they were all done, they, uh, they would do the MYF benediction, which was, I don't know if you still do this one, but it's, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And, and then I don't know how it happened, but uh, they raised their hands, still connected to the persons there, and for some reason, they, they were able to hold on, and they, they all said, Amen. And then they dropped their arms, and they were around the person's shoulders next to them. And then they would take steps toward the center of the circle. And finally, they would be very, very close, and they'd all they'd hug, have a big, huge hug. And it was a joyful time, and the people... And I remember being in on that. We're, we're so, so impressed. And it meant a lot to them as well. I got goosebumps thinking of some of them. When we were able to go outside for a campfire, some of our churches did have a place where we could do and sit around it and singing and, and telling stories there was such a wonderful delight. And, uh, and uh, the... The way in which we were able to, to connect with the stars was, was a wonderful moment. And, and so uh, we, there, were, there were a lot of songs we sang, but one which I remembered was special. And uh, as we looked at the stars, we would, we would say, tell me why the stars do shine. Some of you remember that? Tell me why the ivy twines. Tell me why the ocean's blue. And I'll tell you why I might love you. Well, now, some of you, did you? I made some copies. They're on the end of your pew. So if you don't mind sharing, we so happen to have those. So it's got harmony now. That's important. And so Nancy's going to sing the high harmony. We'll show, we'll show you. We'll try. Okay. And you all stay. Some of you sing with her, but the rest of you sing with me. Tell me why the stars do shine. Tell me why the eye twines. Tell me why the ocean's blue. You're getting it because, because God, God made, made the stars to shine. shine. Because God made the eye twine. Because God made the sky so blue. Because God made you. That's as why. Yes, we're made in the image of God, loving and lovable. Amen. Thank you so much, Alan. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Would you thank him with me? Okay, we are also going to be singing another camp song, and I have not heard anybody at camp for years and years sing this, but when I was going to camp, this was a standard, and that is Jacob's Ladder, and you've got a copy of it in your order of worship, and I would just invite you to sing with us.
those songs that we sang at campfire as well, and I can remember the, the smoke coming up and the little sparks, and we'd look up and see the stars. It's an awesome song. Well, we're going to save our prayer time for a little later in the service, so at this time, we're going to be receiving our offering. One of the things about our offering is that it is, um, it's about what we're able and willing to give back to God. It is not a commandment that I make upon you or den our denomination does, it's all volunteer. Who we are and what we are becoming is how we respond to God's presence in our midst. So let us give to our God as our God has given unto us. Almighty God, change is bittersweet. In order to change, we are forced to leave something behind and to embrace something new. Grant us the grace on this day to do both with humility. Help us affirm the good things of our past as we lean into a future where there will also be good things. As we contemplate the changes that will come, Remind us that all good things come from you. Today we commit ourselves to the necessary work ahead. Be present with us, work in us, and through us we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reading is from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 3 and 6 through 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you, will ha and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, drink the wine and milk without money and without price. 
Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. From Please join us in singing Holy Ground. So Holly was on vacation this week, and so that meant that I did two orders of worship a couple weeks ago, um, which means that it can change over time. Um, but not only was I thinking about a variety of things over this last week, we have encountered a week in our nation that has just been brutal, I think, on just about everybody. So I want us to do some reflecting on that together, and I've changed scriptures, and I've changed it around the order of service, and I'm hoping that this will be more of a conversation together than just words that I am feeling. I'm not sure that there are any words really adequate for the things that have been happening this week. But in this moment, I have cha changed the scripture. Um, the idea for today was to be hiking and to be on a pilgrimage, and there's wonderful things about being on a pilgrimage. Sometimes it's a way in which we seek out a closer relationship to God. Sometimes it's um, a moment where we feel as if we just need to do something physical as penance for the guilt or the shame that we've experienced in our lives. Sometimes it is a way to seek out holiness in a different way. So I think in some ways that theme still is going to fit with these words. But I would like to read these words from Amos. Now Amos was uh, not somebody who had a higher education or advanced degrees. He uh, was a sheep herder and he tended, uh, he tended trees, he tended uh, the fruit of the trees. Uh, and yet he felt this call from God. It's a really short book, you can read it in about half an hour um, if you want to go home and read that later today. But he is, he comes in at a time when things are fairly stable in the nation of Israel, and this is northern Israel, this is the part that broke off after Solomon's death. There was north and there was south. So the leadership in the north uh, was always a little bit at a disadvantage because they didn't have the temple in Jerusalem. And so they were always trying to find ways in which to gather the people together around, um, around things that would keep them as community. 
so uh, even though the king was keeping the country fairly stable, he was kind of wandering from the way of God uh, to, to keep everybody happy. It was his concept of leadership that if he could just make everybody happy, everything would work out. And in the midst of that, the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. And he has a lot of things to say about that, which I'll let you read yourself later. But in chapter five, he says this. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord. In all the squares thou shalt be wailing, and in the streets they shall say, Alas, alas. They shall call the farmers to mourning and those skilled in lamentation to wailing. In all the vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord, darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offering of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So this week has been a tough week. We've had two African-American young men who were shot by police officers. We had a man who was so outraged by what he felt was white supremacy in our world that he shot down police officers in Dallas. And so far this week, there have been acts of terrorism in Pakistan, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Indonesia, Thailand, Yemen, West Bank, Turkey, and Bangladesh. It's a little bit hard to take it all in. And one of the things that I realize about myself in a time like this is it is much easier to feel outrage or grief or to mourn for those who identify as being like me. I was taken last week when there was a, a terrible uh, shooting and bombings in um, Bangladesh that the headline that happened on, on uh, the news outlets online were that three Americans are impacted by this. And it struck me how easy it is for me to be much more involved in the news story if it has something to do with somebody I know or somebody that I can identify with. I've been reading the last several days of all of the different things that people are talking about online right now. And one of the things that really strikes me is that there seems to be a moment of time, not just in our country, but in the world, where we are so afraid and we are so invested in trying to find somebody to blame for this pain that we're feeling, that we are descending into sort of a tribal instinct to protect 
our own and to protect those that we care about the most. And so we have xenophobia and we have nationalism on the rise and we have people that are so fearful that they go out and, and buy guns and we have people that are so fearful that we're going to build walls and we have people that are so fearful that we do amazing things to our neighbors. And most of us in this room are old enough to remember when we've had other times like this. One of the kids this week asked, is this what the civil rights movement was like in the 60s? I'm not sure it really was. I, it almost feels to me a little bit more like World War I, where every country in the world was so intimidated by what was going on in the world and so fearful that we closed all the borders, we hunkered down and made sure that nobody could get in or out. And we were so fearful that once the violence started, it lasted for years and it took millions of lives. Today what I would like to think about together and to just be present with each other is that I think that for each of us, this week is impacting us in different ways. Um, I've been reading on Facebook, one of the posts I saw this morning from a friend was that one of her friends on Facebook unfriended her because she didn't like what she had to say. And I thought, how true that is of this particular time in our lives, that if we cannot agree with one another, we cut each other out of each other's lives. Oh, beloved, that is not the way of the gospel. So here's what I'd like to do, and maybe this is not going to work, which is why it's an experiment. But as I was praying yesterday and today, I thought about what prayer means. And I thought about the fact that we might just need to say to each other what we're praying for. But I want us to remember that prayer is not simply wishful thinking. I've thought often recently about how when people say, well, you're in my thoughts and prayers, how that almost becomes a meaningless phrase, doesn't it? It's like we say thoughts and prayers as if it were just a benign symbol of a pat on the head or a well wish. But real prayer, real prayer does not change God's mind. It changes who we are and how we are in the world. So today I'm just going to invite anybody who would, would like to express a prayer, um, a moment of, of affirmation to those who need our love and care. I would also keep in mind that we have a few people that have been struggling this week. Um, Sharon Graham on the 4th of July was out in her scooter and a car didn't see her and bumped into her scooter and knocked her over. Um, and she was in the hospital and uh, has now been released to Grandview. She broke her hip, but being Sharon, she's indomitable. She is uh, resilient, and I know she would appreciate your prayers. Oh, such a sweetheart. Uh, also, Darlene Broughton uh, had uh, a couple of days in the hospital this week. They found some fluid on her lungs that had cancer cells in it. They've been looking uh, for a way to try to figure out where the cancel, cancer originated. She will be having a port put in and she will be having some chemo very soon. Um, Lois Holter is also, I understand, uh, experiencing some trouble with her back. And the other one that is just heart-rending for the youth in our community is that one of our, our kids, our camp kids from up at Flathead Lake uh, was killed this week. She was in a car with her boyfriend, and they don't know exactly what happened, but he probably overcorrected around a curve. The boyfriend uh, was fine, and Maddie Duke was killed. Last night, they had a prayer vigil for her with all of those camp kids up at Flathead Lake. So there's just lots going on, lots on our minds. So I'm just going to open it up, and if there's someone who would just like to offer a prayer, a, a moment of reflection. I know we don't want to keep this on for too long, but I just want to give us an opportunity to be in conversation about these hard days. Yes, Yesterday morning, and no matter your, your politics, I don't care, President Obama had comments from the, at the end of the NATO meeting, which I thought were some of the most comforting I've heard in a long time. He commented that there are individuals who 
shot the two black men, the black men who shot the police, but most of us weren't involved in that. And that we should pray for ourselves and our communities and our communications within those communities. It, it, was, it was a very comforting discussion of the moment and the events without any rabble rousing or blame game or everything. And, and I pray that we all can hear those words and think about that. I also thought about Great Falls. And I've had a fair amount of interaction with the police with that burial we found last spring. And I can't imagine those events happening in this community. I pray that that's true. And I pray that we communicate our, among ourselves and with our law enforcement officers to help maintain that communication. Thank you, Sam. I think maybe this morning, uh, maybe more than ever before in my life, I really heard those words where God says, uh, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. And, you know, I, I like to believe that I'm right about things. But I need to really hear those words too. And I think we all do. Thank you. You'll notice I refrained from saying, yes, I know you want to be right, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Um, one of my bucket list items a long time ago was to um, go into the United States Peace Corps and give back to my country um, in ways that I had seen others do. And one of the things that happens when you do that is you learn a lot about the country uh, to which you're assigned. And I was assigned to Morocco. And one of the things that I learned is back when we were fighting as the United States of America for our independence as the United States, one of the things that happens with that is you decide that you're going to be independent and then you ask others to recognize you in your independence. The first country to recognize us as a sovereign unity and independent was Morocco, a Muslim nation. They were the first ones and there's a United States um, stamp that recognizes that. And now to hear that we are trying to keep all Muslims out to me is um, so wrong and so heartbreaking that we would classify people um, by their religion or by their ethnicity. And um, I certainly don't want to be put into a classification with so-called Christians who have done horrendous things just because I'm a Christian. And so my prayer is that Muslim or Christian or Jew or Baha'i or Buddhist or whatever way you worship the Lord is not a label that is going to condemn you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I was in Atlanta as a student the night Martin Luther King was assassinated. I was asked to go downtown and help keep things in order. I didn't. But there was no raucousness or anything else. The mayor against his people's advice went down and spoke to the crowd and everything was calm. Again, this week or last week, Atlanta was calm. It was not riotous. And you have to stop and think of some places like Montana or Idaho or other places like that are not overwhelmed 
by black people or African Americans. The South is. And I just think that's an example of how we can love each other. Well, thank you, Jerry. Words are difficult for me when I talk about the issue of our denomination. As Nancy talked about the jurisdictional conference, so the primary legislative body that rewrites the discipline, if they want to rewrite it, is the general conference. Meets every four years. We gather about a thousand delegates together from the United States, Africa, all around the world. And we struggle to make positive and hopeful decisions for our church. Linda and I have been to the last five of these meetings, We're not as delegates, but as part of a group. There's one on one side, and we have two sides in our denomination. And we have been at each other since 1972. And I'm fearful for the unity of our denomination. At this last general conference, when the heat began to rise and it was hot, maybe hotter than that place we talk about with flames and all of that kind of stuff. Phoenix. It was hot. And the bishops were sent to their own place to find a solution. And so they went. They came back and said, let's not talk about it for the rest of the day because that talking is just going to lead us to further division. And they were assigned to put together a commission to meet the next couple of three years before the next general conference and to call maybe a special general conference. And that commission is supposed to come back with a way forward. And it is that commission that we have our hope as a denomination. That hope that they can somehow bridge the gap of that which has so separated us. That the United Church might, the United Methodist Church, might go on as a united church. And we need to pray for that commission. That is my hope. That is my hope. Thank you, John. Absolutely. I'm concerned about the politics of the church in Great Falls. But as you know, my road involved two little girls. And having had the fortune of being able to buy a home in Great Falls, my concern is the people of Great Falls. So when Joe and I have extra food, we share it with our neighbors who have many children, and Papa works hard, but as you raised your own children, you know, an extra gallon of milk or an extra box of cereal goes a long way to helping. So we share our food. We take time to go to Walmart and we buy boxes of crackers or bottles of water so that those that have lunches from the church can have a little extra. Or lunches of bananas. Just simple things. And this is where the spirit of the church lies. In the small little things we do. It's not the giving of a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. It's the giving of a quarter. The small little things you do. Telling your neighbor good morning. Helping your neighbor across the street cut a lawn. It's these little things you do that make the family grow. It's that sharing of your personal love. Not being shy to go to your neighbor and saying, like I did, please don't think badly of me, but we have extra food. 
can you use it? And they were so grateful for the gallon of milk and the boxes of cereal and the jars of peanut butter. This is where your love lies. Don't be afraid to share it with each other. See if somebody else has a. Anybody else want to share? Some of you know that uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. And uh, when I was in Vietnam, we had names for the Vietnamese, like Gook. Uh, the same thing happened in World War II, World, World War I, every war we've ever been in. Uh, we have names for the people, and it makes it easier to kill them. Um, we have names for one another in this country right now. And in some cases, it has made it easier to kill. Uh, but it also makes it easier to kill the spirit in one another. It makes it easier to kill community among us when we call names like that. And so again, as I said earlier, I was really struck more this morning when I heard the, the scripture where God says, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. God does not use those names. Uh, God loves each and every one of us even those that uh, we would rather be able to call those names. But they are God's children's too. Anybody else have a, a prayer or a wish for today? Kathy. Just real short. Um, this week's been real exciting for me, and there's almost a, a feeling of guilt knowing that all these things were going on. Um, something that I've been really practicing, and I know a lot of you do the same thing, is I'm really trying to stay in the moment and in God's love. And when all these things are happening, I'm trying really hard to focus on who I am, who God is, and I try to just give that feeling out. So that's kind of where I'm at this week. And um, even in my joy, I know that there are a lot of things going on. And sometimes I just can't do what I want to do, but I can stay in God's love and give that love out. Thanks, Kathy. Absolutely. I've got all sorts of stuff I've been gathering the last 48 hours from people I know and people I don't know. and. Um, I emailed um, Union Bethel AME Zion Church yesterday um, to just let their pastor know, just down the street here, that we will be thinking of them. Um, let's just be aware that there are those around us, and, and these are not, I mean, the, all of the stuff that happened this week happens in microcosm right next door to us. There's so much that goes on. But we are a people of hope, and I believe that we, as a people of God, have an impact in the world. That by our choosing the good, by us choosing for righteousness, for us acting out and speaking out for justice, that we make a difference. And sometimes that difference is just a gallon of milk. Sometimes that difference is a sack lunch. Sometimes that difference is sitting with someone and not saying anything, which is oftentimes the best thing you can do. But I'm going to close with words from a pastor who was in New York when all of this began this week. He said, last night I sat on the pavement with a crowd of protesters in New York. <clears throat> That's an action, sure, but then what? As a pastor or faith leader, excuse me, <clears throat> there is more for me and for you to do. It is go time. We are to act in ways that bring healing and hope. There is no escaping our responsibility. None of us are exempt. 
no matter what our political bent or church setting or social location, no matter that we feel helpless or lost, not knowing what to say or do is a shared experience from pulpit to pew to parking lot. Many pastors are afraid to risk with their congregations. Congregations are afraid to let their pastors be real, let alone prophetic. But when a man asked Jesus to heal his son, he said, I have faith, and then help my lack of faith. You can have faith and still wonder why or when. What's never in question is who. It is clear who needs to help, who will be the source of help and hope. That's Jesus, through us, by our actions. Would you stand with me for our closing hymn? invite you to join us in the Vano Hall that's just around the corner here for some refreshments. Um, I guess I would invite us this week to just find somebody who needs a little hope, who needs a kind word, a word of encouragement, a moment of grace, and be Jesus. Now may the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit, and the courage of our Christ go with us this day and forevermore. Amen.